If I asked you to name the components of your blood, you would probably know most of them. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Well, red blood cells are super boring, and I'm probably going to run out of time before I can get to platelets. So this video is going to be entirely about the unsung heroes of your blood, white blood cells. They relentlessly defend you against a wide array of pathogens. They're born to kill things, so much so that young white blood cells are called stabs. Something most people don't know is that there are many, many types of white blood cells that perform many, many different functions. Heck, I'm not even going to cover them all. Generally, they're divided into two categories, innate and adaptive. The innate immune response is a general response to a wide variety of threats. It isn't as strong as the adaptive response, but most of the time it's enough. Part of the innate immune response are granulocytes. They get their name from having tons of little granules filled to the brim with fun, and by fun I mean deadly toxins. Leaving the granulocytes, we come to the macrophages, which are huge as far as blood cells go. They have a very important job of keeping your blood clean and pathogen free. When they encounter a piece of debris, they do the only logical thing, eat it. This process is called phagocytosis, which literally means to eat cells. But they aren't just janitors, their massive size makes them a tank of a fighter. They can eat up to 100 invaders in one sitting. After engulfing a pathogen, they destroy it with acid and then take the leftovers and display them on its surface, like little trophies. Now that's as metal as you can get. No one cares that you have iron, go back to transporting oxygen. Your innate immune system puts up a hell of a fight against a wide variety of pathogens, but sometimes it isn't enough. Sometimes a bacteria or virus can replicate fast enough to get the upper hand. But don't worry, the immune system has another trick up its sleeve, the adaptive immune response. It starts with another antigen presenting cell, the dendritic cell. Dendritic cells are like the bridge between your innate and adaptive immune systems. When the innate immune response isn't keeping the invaders at bay, dendritic cells flock to the battlefield and start collecting protein fragments, or antigens. They display these on their surface and head to the nearest lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are like the heart of the immune system. Millions of immune cells are stored here, awaiting battle orders. Most cells here are T and B cells. I'll get back to B cells in a bit. When a dendritic cell gets to the lymph node, it brushes past T cells, looking for one that can bind to the fragments on its surface. Each T cell is unique in that they can only bind to one very specific antigen. If a match is found, the T cell gets activated and starts dividing like crazy to raise a clone army. But if a match is not found, don't worry, Darwin's got your back. Inside your own body, a natural selection party begins. The T cells that aren't attracted to the dendritic cell's antigens are destroyed, and those with the highest affinity get to survive and reproduce. This process has a high mutation rate, but it is also highly regulated. If a T cell starts feeling like attacking your own self antigen, which if left unchecked would result in an autoimmune disease, it is immediately destroyed. Eventually, through the powers of natural selection, a T cell with a crazy high affinity to the antigen is produced. This T cell promptly gets activated, divides, and begins raising that clone army. As the T cell divides, it creates different variants of T cell. Most are cytotoxic T cells, which are the clones sent off into battle. Some are helper T cells, which play a vital role in boosting the immune response. And a few are memory T cells, which stay behind in the lymph node and chill. If the same pathogen dares to come back, a dendritic cell can pick up its antigen, bring them to the lymph node, and lo and behold, the memory cells are the perfect match, meaning they can immediately raise a clone army and get to destroying the threat. Now on to B cells. These guys make lots of something you've probably heard of before, antibodies. Like T cells, they are very specific. Their antibodies only bind to one specific antigen. While chilling in the lymph node, they have a few of these antibodies on their surface. Remember those helper T cells from earlier? Some of them go to the battlefield, but some of them go to activate B cells. They look for a match, and if they can't find one, the same natural selection frenzy happens until the perfect B cell is produced. This B cell, once activated, divides rapidly and turns into an antibody-producing factory. And I mean factory. They spew out 2,000 antibodies a second. Rapidly dividing B cells also make different flavors. Most go on to become factories, but a few become memory B cells, which, like memory T cells, stay around and wait in case the same threat returns. Soon, the threat is completely eliminated. Regulatory T cells show up on the scene to calm the immune system down so they don't continue their rampage and start attacking your own healthy cells. And that's how your immune system takes care of almost any threat thrown at it so you can keep on living.